just say bye bye. I got a message this morning the Lord gave me. I've been working on this thing in my head for a long time. And you know, I was just sitting here thinking as I've been going through this thing. You know, I worked, uh, where I worked at before, I used to get people come in and apply for, for applying for jobs, and I would have to do the interview. Now imagine if you were doing an interview with someone that was coming to work where you work at, and the first thing they would say to you is this, I want you to know something, I am a liar. Then I have someone to tell you that I am deceitful. And I am somebody that you can't trust because everything I do, I do for myself. But I want a job with you. Would you have? So what I want to talk to you about is that this person who is a deceiver, but yet we allow him to come into our lives. So we got to recognize today who is the deceiver that's been coming into our lives that's been causing us all of these issues that we have to say bye-bye to today. Bye-bye. And I'm telling you what, that he is there and he is as busy as he can be. Let me tell you something about him. He is a deceiver. If you look at Revelation 12, verse number 9, let me get to where that says that. At. Yes, here is it. He says, the great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, the one deceiving the world, the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels, saying that he is a deceiver. And sometimes we don't, I need to go through this again because we have allowed ourselves, we have gotten to the point where we, we, we just don't believe that, he's a, that he is who he is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we give him more than what he is authorized to have. Amen. So we, we, we got to keep in mind. So let's, let's give a description of who Satan is. And he is as the deceiver. Let's understand this. The devil is not a symbol or a legend. Get that into your head first. He is very real. Mm -hmm. Originally, Satan was an angel of God, but through his pride, he became corrupt. Pride. The pride of life. He became so prideful that he became so corrupt. The devil is God's enemy, and he constantly tries to hinder God's work. But he is limited by God's power and can only do what is permitted to what he is permitted to do. God still got power over him, and we're worried about it. We've got to quit worrying. The name Jesus means adversary, or it means an accuser. He's a he's a father of lies. We're going to talk about that more about who he is. He actively looks for people to attack. He actively looking for people to attack. He can do nothing on his own. He has to have a vessel to get something done. So he's always trying to find somebody that he can work through. He's an emulator of God. He knows the power that God has. So what he wants to do is try to do the same thing God does. God, God has to use a, a, a vessel to get his work done. Satan has to do the same thing. So Satan is just as busy trying to get you to do what he wants you to do. He is working in your life, trying to get you to do things. And God is steadily trying to take it. Have you ever had something you were involved in, that little small voice inside of you says, that's not right. Have you ever had that come to your mind? And you, you want to do it, and, and you, because you know what's going to feel good. Is you think that must be the right thing, but inside of you, a little voice says, don't you do it. Holy Spirit trying to talk to you. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we do it anyway. We've got to be careful. We can't do that. Satan likes to seek out believers who are vulnerable in their faith, who are spiritually weak, or who are isolated from other believers. Isolated, isolated from mm -hmm. other believers. You know, it's, it's a good thing when you can stand and be around other believers because you know what that happens to us then? We uphold each other. Mm -hmm. If you think back in the animal world, if you got a, if you have a, a, a lion, for example, and he wants to he wants to attack, he wants some food. So he's gonna get up a buffalo or whatever he can get his hands on, or a deer. What's the first thing he does? Separates them out. He got to separate them out. And if he can separate them out, mm -hmm. and he goes for the weakest that he can find, and the ones that's weakest, that's the one he devours. Satan is no difference. He's watching you. He's watching those who are weak. Mm -hmm. He's watching those that he can come across.
those things that he can put into your lives. If he finds you weak in this area, why would he ever attack you where you're strong? Mm -hmm. He would never attack the strong people. He always attacks those who are weak. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he goes after those issues in your life that you're the weakest in. Amen. Yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. He's always wanting to attack. That's who he is. That, that's what he's all about. Even though God permits the devil to do his work on this earth, God is still in control. Jesus has completed power over Satan. He defeated Satan when he died and rose from the, uh, the sins of mankind. One day Satan will be bound forever, never again to do his evil works. His, he knows his ending. He knows his ending. He knows where he's going to go. He knows that fiery place is waiting on him. And that's where he's going to end up. Jesus calls Satan the father of lies. That's why I said, would you let somebody that lies to you like that come in and get a job? The attitudes and actions of these leaders clearly identified them as followers of Satan. They may not have been conscious of this, but their hatred of truth, their lies, and their murderous intentions indicated how much control the devil had over them. They were, listen to this, they were his tool in carrying out his plans. Mm -hmm. They were his tools in carrying out his plans. Satan couldn't pull the plans off by himself. He got to have somebody to be Amen. able to do it for Amen. him. Amen. Mm. They were his tools. They spoke the very same language of his lies. Mm -hmm. Satan still uses people to obstruct God's work even today. He has never stopped. He's been doing it for years and years and years. That's who Satan is. That's who Satan's desires are. Contrary to popular belief, Satan is not a roaring lion. We sometimes hear him say he goes around as a roaring lion. Quit thinking that he is a roaring lion. See, right. he was booted out of heaven, and you know he's here on earth, and he's going around trying to see what weak person he can find, and he roars at them as if they were a roaring lion. I'm not going to tell you the story about Joe Cole. I told you about him before, about the man that, uh, that believed that uh, uh, had that big house where the dog came by and the dog kept growling at him until he threw the rock at the dog and realized the dog had no teeth. Well, the same thing's happened to us today. Satan's coming around as a roaring lion. Get yourself a brick, and you get that brick ready to hit him, and you'll find out he has no teeth. Amen. He is as a roaring lion, so quit thinking that he is. He wants you to think he's a roaring lion, but he's only a pretender. He is a deceiver. And he is deceiving us. See, sometimes we become so complacent in where we're at, we don't realize that Satan is busy at, at working in our lives wherever he can. He's always trying to do something. Don't think he's not, not trying to do something to you. 1 Peter 5 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring, roaring, roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to find somebody. Whom he may devour. If you think you're the weakness, you better be careful because he's looking out for you. Mm. He's trying to find somebody that he, that he can devour. Mm. Mm. Remember, the Bible tells us that he is the master of deception. He is the master of deception. Excuse me. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan was deceived with the whole world, which I read you before. It's, it's Revelation 12 9. Take warning. Satan is capable of deceiving those who let down their guard. Amen. You think, oh, not me. He can never, he can never get me. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a little bit of a story. Delilah, Delilah was, a was a deceitful woman. Mm. With honey on her lips and poison in her heart. Mm. Cold and calculating. She toyed with, Saint, with Samson. Mm. Pretending to love him while looking uh, for personal gain. How could, Satan, how could Samson be so foolish? The first time she deceived him, and the second time she deceived him, and yet he came back believing, oh, she can't be telling him, that, that, that's not right, she got to be wrong. The third time she deceived him, and the fourth time she, and he still kept coming back. Isn't it amazing how foolish he was? How many times do we allow ourselves to be decide, de deceived by flattery? And give into temptation on wrong beliefs. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what Samson did here. He mm -hmm. believed in this woman. He had his mind set on this woman. And no matter what she told him, he was going to believe it. Until he was totally deceived. 
how easy it is for us to be deceived the same way. These things that we're looking at, these things that feel so good, these things we get so excited about, they, they can't be wrong because they feel so good. And they got me so excited. I, I, I look at it this way. Here, here's how I look at things. I know what God has called me for in my life. I know that when my day comes, whenever I know I'm getting ready to do something for the Lord, I can expect Satan to try to find some way to stop me from doing it. He's going to find something to stop me from doing it. Even on Sunday mornings, I'll be honest with you, on Sunday mornings, when I get ready to come up and go to church, sometimes I feel like, you know what? I don't feel like, well, it's raining outside this morning. I think I'm going to sleep in this morning. That's right. So Satan, you're a lie. Mm -hmm. That's your lie. This again, you're trying to deceive me. Then my wife looked over and said, you got to go. You're the pastor. So anyway, I do come home to church. I do get here and get here anyway. But so there's so many things. And then I know that whenever, I mean, there's times when I know it's my responsibility. There may be someone that needs prayer. And sometimes, you know, I say, Lord, you know, I'm tired. I just don't feel like going. And all of a sudden, I mean, things will get inside of me that says, don't go do that. You don't need to do that. Why don't you just stay home and rest? After all, yes. I got all kinds of excuses of why I can't go. I know why I can't do this. And then I have to sit back and realize, but this is God's desire for me in my life. Mm -hmm. If I don't do what God's calling me to do, mm -hmm. that means he's got to find somebody else to do it because I refuse to do what God called me to do. Mm -hmm. Then I've got to realize, where is this deceitful feeling coming from? Mm -hmm. I gotta realize where it's coming from. Mm. Even in my our married life, one with another, sometimes we have some issues between husband and wives. And we, the first thing we want to do is start blaming each other for the issues. In reality, you gotta realize where it's coming from. Amen. It's not coming from your spouse, it's coming from Satan. Mm -hmm. Yes. He has got a deceitful thing. Anytime a marriage gets together and works and it's working well, Satan knows it. Wanna put a thousand to flight? Two will put 10,000 to flight. Mm -hmm. So his ultimate goal is split them up before they get all this power together. Amen. Right. Amen. Break them down. I don't care what the issue may be. Yes. What's my weak point? What's my weakest spot? Mm -hmm. Whatever it may be, Satan's going to step yeah. in and try to break it. Yes. He is always wanting to try to break you up one way or another. Yes. Why? Because he knows if you come together, you got power. Mm -hmm. His ultimate goal is to break you down before you can get ahead. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't hit you where you're strong. He'll always hit you where you're weak. Mm -hmm. Your weakest point is what he's going to come after. Yeah. I can handle this all by myself. No, you can't. Uh -huh. Sometimes you've got to call on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Satan's greatest power is his ability to trick you by manipulating your imagination. Mm -hmm. Boy, he can put stuff into your mind. Uh -huh. And ooh, and just start making you think things that's not even true. He'll put those things in your mind, and I tell you what, one of the biggest problems my wife and I ever had when we first got married, Lord knows I was trying to be a good husband, but boy, some, Satan put imagination in her mind that I was seeing somebody else. She in her mind, she says, I know you are. I said, what do you mean you know I am? Because I know that in my mind I saw you, I know this is what you were doing. And the girl went after the pistol at me. She's going to shoot me with a pistol. Tell on you, baby. She's going to get me with the pistol. And I hadn't done a thing. <laughs> hadn't gone nowhere. I go to work. I come home give her my paycheck. I ain't got nothing. All I, I beg for money for gas in the car. And she thought I was, I, I ain't got nobody else. Well, I dreamed it. Isn't it? I know you dreamed it. But see, that's an imagination I'm trying to tell you. Satan will do whatever he can do, even through your imagination, to try to get you to disrupt what God has put together. Amen. Satan knew, let me tell you something, Satan knew that somewhere down the road, 35, 40 years from the time that happened, Satan knew what was going to be happening. He knew we were going to be working for God's glory. Amen. And his thing was, bring it up before it gets there. That's right. If I can stop it before they become so powerful, they're going to be praying for people. They're going to be healing people through Jesus' name. They're going to be casting out demons. They're going to be doing it. Get them before they get to be so strong. That's right. That's the way he does things. He sees things. And he knows the power that God is within you. Wow. Why do you think Satan attacks sometimes? Because he sees something in you that he got to break down before the power gets there. Whoa. Oh, what he is. You must always be on guard 
ready to cast down every false image he sends your way. And he's going to send them your way, and you better be able to cast them down. Mm. Cast it down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. In 2 Corinthians 10.5. Cast it down now. Don't let it get a hold of you. Popular opinion says you better watch out for that old slew foot. Watch out for slew foot. He's really, really tough on customers. However, when you look beyond the surface, you can find the devil is nothing more than a defeated foe. He's already defeated. Amen. He's defeated. Yes. Don't you know you got victory over him? The Word of God tells us he is <coughs> definitely not all-powerful. But we try to think he is. It actually portrays him as super weak. Scripture tells us this future, his future looks bleak. For he is headed for what is that awful place called the bottomless pit. Mm. That's where he's headed for. And he knows he's going there. Mm -hmm. Notice that it won't take a legion of angels to put him in the bottomless pit. <laughs> Instead, the Bible says one angel is all it will take to do the job. Mm -hmm. All right now. One angel. Mm. One angel. One you. All right. One me. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. We have authority in the name of Jesus. The scripture says demons tremble at the sound of yes. his name. Yes. So we have all power in the yes. name of Jesus. That's Why right. do we let him take over? Mm. Oh. Uh, that's right. He doesn't have power over you. Uh. You just start pleading the name of Jesus. Boy, you watch him. His knees will start to bow. Amen. Uh. Jesus, I know Paul. I know, but who are you? Mm -hmm. uh. You better watch out. Notice that it won't take a legion of angels. Mm. The Bible says one angel can do it. Don't misunderstand. I'm not saying the devil never does any real damage. Uh. It is obvious that Christians suffer many losses in his name, uh. at his hands. Lives are torn up, jobs are lost, precious children are led off into sin. Mm. The fact that the devil plays a part in this tragedy is obvious. But let's take another look and see. If, we really, if he really has the ability to cause problems without recruiting somebody's help, uh. he can't do it by himself. He's got to recruit somebody uh. to be able to help him. The first mention of Satan in the Bible is in Genesis that portrays him as a garden snake. Uh. Mm -hmm. However, by the time you get to the book of Revelation, <laughs> he's a ferocious dragon. Mm -hmm. yep. we know. Now the question is, how did he get there? Think about it. A garden snake grows into a dragon in just 66 books of the Bible. He goes from that point to that point. How did he become so big and ferocious? The answer is very simple. Someone has been feeding him. The question that immediately comes to your mind is, how do you feed the devil? Who has been doing it? And we think sometimes it may have been some satanic occult or some, couple, some witches or somebody else that have been feeding him and feeding him and feeding him. Who has been the benefactor? Mm -hmm. As amazing as it may seem, the saints of God are the ones who have been systematically increasing yes. the devil's ability. Mm -hmm. Ooh. It's yes. been Christians mm -hmm. who systematically has been feeding him. Mm -hmm. You would think we would be the one to be casting him down, but we are the ones who have been feeding him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How have we done it? It's simple. <coughs> By constantly speaking of how powerful he is. Mm. By we constantly speaking about how powerful he is. Mm. It may not make much sense until you remember what Jesus told us. He said, we will have whatsoever we say and whatever we believe. Mm. Whosoever shall say and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, he shall have whatever he saith. Mm. Mm, whatever he said. Misinformed Christians have been restoring Satan's strength with their words. They do it because Satan has carefully blinded them with one of the biggest cover-ups of all times. That's what Satan does. One of his cover-ups. Remember, it used to be Lucifer's job to provide covering, security, and privacy for God. That was his job. He was a covering. That's what he was. He was a covering God. The Bible tells him the covering cherub in Ezekiel 28, 14. It says he was the covering cherub. He was the covering over God. And what does that mean? He was God's protection. He was always over God. However, since, since Satan's fall, he has become the prince of darkness who has run into a big, giant cover-up. 
constantly. I'm trying to get your minds open up to win. Let's look at one of the greatest cover-ups. John 10.10. 10. Without realizing that many faithful Bible teachers unconsciously feed the devil. The mistake takes place because of another cover-up. This is how Satan does it. He covers up, covers up things so we don't know it. The devil hides the true meaning of John 10.10. 10. The thief cometh but, by, but to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he says. Mm -hmm. That's what the scripture says. As you know, the popular interpretation of this verse is that the thief is the devil. Well, many preachers tell us the devil has the ability to kill, steal, and destroy. No doubt this statement has been made millions of times. If the devil has such power, mm. the church is in heap trouble. Mm. If Satan has the power to steal, kill, and destroy, we got some issues. Uh -huh. mm. Because all of us who are believers aren't supposed to be here. He had the authority to kill us, we'd be gone. No way. If he could kill the church, he would kill the church if he had the authority to do it. Mm -hmm. So we give him the authority because we're always saying, Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. If the devil has such power, we are in trouble. However, the true meaning is quite different. In this biblical context, John 10.10 10 doesn't even mention the devil. The context of this scripture does re refer to the devil, but not as a thief. The thieves and the robbers are hireling shepherds. Mm -hmm. The thief are hireling shepherds. These are the, these, these are the ones that John 10.10 10 clearly identifies them as hirelings. Meaning that they are the ones that are taking... That, as soon as something happens, what's the hireling do? He takes the money that has been given, the responsibility that he's had over the sheep, and he runs. How many pastors have you seen that runs? Immediately when something goes wrong. Thieves in John 10.10 10 are false pastors, shepherds, who take the leadership of the church without having a real love or concern for God's sheep or his word. Upon close examination, it becomes obvious that Satan is not the thief. However, he does appear in a parable. He's the wolf. Satan is the wolf. From the thieves, <laughs> he's the one that comes from the hireling. He comes to the hireling. And the, and, the, and the hireling will flee, leaving the sheep to their mercy. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when the wolf comes, mm -hmm. the hireling runs. The hirelings are the ones that are still killing and destroying, but when the wolf comes, the wolf is Satan coming. That's when we got our issues. As the church continues to speak recklessly of Satan as a killing, stealing, and destroyer, we actively give him power to speak exactly that. As long as we keep telling him he has the power to steal, the power to kill, the power to destroy, and we keep telling that over and over and over again, after a while it becomes real to him as well as it comes real to us. Uh -huh. We're so busy talking about the power that he has to kill, and he doesn't have the power to kill. That was taken away from him by Jesus. He doesn't have that power anymore. But what do we do? We're constantly giving him that power. The words of our mouth. The things we speak are coming to be. Why? Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. And as we speak it, he becomes more powerful. Even if he doesn't have the authority. If you talk about killing, stealing, the devil, that's exactly what kind of devil you would be messing with. Every day you're going to be messing with the devil that can steal, kill, and destroy. Every day, every day, every day. Remember the Lord's word. You will have whatsoever you say. If you say it, that's what you're going to get. We all know that Jesus stripped Satan of his power to kill on Calvary. So don't miss the scripture, Hebrews 2.14. For as much when then as the children are paid partakers of the flesh and the blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. And through death he might destroy him. And had the power of death, that is the devil. He had taken it away from him. He no longer has that power. Don't keep giving it to him. The Bible tells us Jesus disarmed Satan and broke the chains of bondage that he had on you. You are now free to do and be all that God has called you to be. You can be all that God intended you to be. You can be exactly what God's called you to be. You don't have to be broken down where Satan tries to get a hold of you and breaks you from doing it. 
God says, I've given you through Jesus Christ that you can steal what he's called you to do. Everybody, you didn't just come here for no reason. You came here with a purpose. The question is, are you going to listen to what God has to say in your life and fulfill that purpose? Or are you going to let Satan steal what God has given you? It's yours. The thing is, how are you going to take it and what are you going to do it? He has nothing but tail power. A dead snake, a dead dog. He got no power. He, take no, he has no power. The only power he has is what you give him. It's what you give him, not what he has. Whatever you spend your time talking about will draw strength from your words. Mark 1, 34 says, Jesus cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to even speak. What did he give him the power to speak? And the first thing he says, oh, are you here to do this to us already? He was fearful. They were fearful. You know why? Because Jesus was speaking the word. Mm -hmm. Jesus was speaking the word. It is written. Mm. It is written. Mm -hmm. You know, even whenever he just got finished being baptized. I mean, yeah, he was baptizing. He went into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Satan tried to attack him with pride and all the possessions. All. And what did Jesus always say? Mm -hmm. It is written. Satan would try to attack. It is written. Hey, when Satan tries to attack you, uh, it is written. Yeah. I have power in the name of Jesus. You bow in the name of Jesus. Right. You have no authority on my life. All right. All right. It's all I have in the power of Jesus. Yes. Why do I have to take this kind of beating when I don't have to? Uh, we don't have to. If you realize the power, the problem with us is we don't realize the power that we have in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yes. People walking around, the devil been chasing me all day long. Stop it! He has no reason to be chasing you. You should turn around and start chasing him. Get him on the run. Get him to realize he has no power. The sting has been taken out of his tail. He's like a dead snake, as it says. He's like a dead snake. He has no power. You have the power over the devil. You must now fix your attention on the ultimate power God has given you to overthrow the devil and to unmask his deception. And you can unmask his deception. Every time that you prepare to do something in God's work and something comes up to try to break you up, realize one thing. He's trying to deceive you. Don't let him deceive you about the power that you have in the name of Jesus. You walk in faith. You walk in trust. Steps of a righteous man. Yes. Or the Lord. And when you make those steps and you do what God's called you to do, let me tell you something. Satan will do whatever he can to break you. God's power only comes through what we are willing to do what God wants to work through us. God will come to you and he will share with you. He will put things in your heart that you know you need to do. He will put things in your heart, the things that he needs to have done. He will work with you to try to get you to do it. But Satan will come right along and say, do you really think that was God? Mm -hmm. No, that's right. Do you really think that was God? Mm -hmm. That wasn't God. You have no right to be doing that. That's not a God. Immediately recognize, if it's something you know God has called you to do it, do it. Do it. Amen. No matter how simple it may sound, how stupid it may sound, because sometimes God is trying to say, Will you be obedient to my word? Oh, God. Because, see, if I can trust you with small things, wow. he said, now I can give you some larger things to take care of. I know I can give you faith. I mean, I know, I know whatever I give you, you, you'll be able to do those things for me. I'm a big believer in that. God tells me to do something small. Okay, Lord, must be a reason you want me to do it. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to do it anyway because I know this has got to be from you. And so I do it. The next time he gives me something bigger. Uh -huh. Something bigger. Until it got to the point with my wife and I, as we did the small things, the small things, the small things. And then one day the Lord told us to do something big. And we says, oh, Lord. And so the Lord says, I'll never forget it. We was, it's this people's house. And this little old lady was there. She was on a cane. The lady could barely walk. They didn't have to help her out the chair. And so we was there at the house, and they asked us, will we pray for her? And I said, well, sure, I don't see why not. I, yeah, we'll, we'll pray for her. 
So my honey and I got together, and I remember me laying hands on her. I said, you put your hands on her legs. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just thinking, doing what the Lord told me to do. I had never done this before. So I'm praying over this woman. I put my hands on this woman. My honey put her hands on her legs, and, and we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed. And after a while, boy, we sat back and said, thank you, Lord. That woman dropped her cane, threw her cane down on the floor, ran up and down the steps. She walked up the steps, and she walked down the steps. She walked up the steps and down the steps. Everybody was standing there at Amaze, including us. Mm -hmm. What just happened? <laughs> we were shocked over what happened. But see, what I'm saying is this. We trusted in the Lord in small things. Now he knew he could trust us in larger things. And as you spend your time with the Lord, and you start believing in what God's got for you, he will give you power to do things above your own expectations. We shouldn't have been surprised. We should have said, well, thank you, Lord. We should have been expecting it. But then afterward, we started praying for people and we knew that what was going to take place. Why? Because he trusted us in the small things. We didn't let Satan steal it from us, but we kept walking and marching and doing things God called us to do. We got to the point where we could sit on, we were at a prayer meeting one night. I prayed for a little boy who had, what was his disease? A celiac screw. I said, let me pray for this boy. I asked the woman, I said, let me ask you something. Do you believe God will heal your son? She said, if you pray for him, I know he'll, he'll heal my son. He wasn't there. So, no, he was there. He was at home. I said, well, in prophecy, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for your son that he, be, that he gets healed. That's how brave I was. I, you ain't got to be here. I'll just speak his word. Healing to take place because Jesus is using me. I know I can do it. I spoke healing to that boy. Never had a doubt in my mind. I believed that I kept on going to something else. Amen. It was being done. Why? Because I had been trusted in the small things. And I trusted God in the big things. Amen. That lady went home. Yeah. Believing everything that I had prayed. She went and got pizza. Something he wasn't even allowed to eat. Mm. She gave him the first piece. He ate it. She gave him the second piece. He ate it. Gave him the third piece. He ate it. Went outside and played. Never had any repercussion from eating Amen. pizza at all. Praise she got so excited, she called us and told us that her son was healed. And I didn't even get excited. I said, well, I knew God was going to heal him. But I did ask her this. I said, if God heals your son, what are you going to do to show God how much you appreciate it? She said, I'll throw the biggest block party and everybody in York's going to know that my son's been healed through Jesus. I said, very good. That's what you're going to do. Well, she did that. But she called us and she says, uh, one year she says, what date are you guys available? So my honey gave her a date. She said, okay, that's going to be the date of my big party. I said, oh boy, that sounds great to me. <laughs> We'll have a big party. And so we did. So she called neighbors, people from everywhere. By day, as usual, we were driving in a little later than everybody else. And there was cars parked all up and down the street, parking lot, everything. There was, I don't know how many people was there. We walked up to that place. And everybody says, the burdens are here. The burdens are here. And I was, okay, fine. The burdens are here. So we started eating and everything else. <laughs> but we found out when we got there, they knew who we were. They says, these people are anointed of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They are able to, Jesus were able to heal through them. They had every lame, sick person they could find in New York was at that house. <laughs> I said, are you kidding me? We walked and there was people in wheelchairs. There was people, uh, you know, I believe they was carried in on beds. I, I don't know. There, there was people from everywhere was in there. We walked in. I thought we were just going to have a block party. Yeah, you went to eat. It was a healing party. Mm. She was so enthused by what God had done in her life mm. through her, for her son. So we walked around, my honey and I, and we just laid hands on people, just praying on people. And you know what? People were being healed. Amen. People were being healed. Amen. We were touching them. They were being healed. Amen. People in wheelchairs were getting up walking. We were, I mean, God was using us. Mm. And you know what was really great about that? We had spent so much time with the Lord that it didn't surprise us. The first time it scared us to no end. But the more time we spent with Jesus, the more time we spent loving and praising God, the more power that God used. Why? Because he could trust us with the larger things. Amen. Or I could give you some testimonies, but that's one. 
So I'm saying to you, when God wants to use you, don't turn it away. Do what God's called you to do. There's a reason that He, there's a reason that He sometimes takes you through a storm. He takes you through a storm to see what do you do in that storm. The disciples had a hard time. They, did, they was with Jesus and didn't trust him in the storm. Uh -huh. Oh, ye of little faith, he says. Oh, ye of little faith. Mm. Let's start getting some faith and believing in God. Amen. Mm. Yes. There's some powerful things that we have in our lives. And if we just be obeyed, don't let Satan steal. He is a deceiver. Yeah, His yeah. ultimate thing is that he does not want you to utilize what God's got for you. He don't want you to use it. He wants you to not use it. He'd rather see you break away than to see you look, see what God's got for you. I don't know about you, but that, that, that encourages me. Amen. Because there's been times when I know my wife and I, how busy we used to be, and when we, 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 we don't do it like we used to, but we need to get back into that power that God had given us. Amen. Yes. Amen. It never left. Amen. We just didn't use it. Amen. It never left. It's still here. We still lay hands on people. We still heal people. Mm. But through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. My, 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 my. Father in heaven, I praise you for this day, Father. I thank you for the power that you have given us in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that everywhere we walk and everything we do, Father, we do it in your name, giving you praise, giving you glory, giving you honor, Father, because you're worthy to be praised in all that we do. Yes. May our eyes be open unto you, Father. May our hearts be able to receive and our bodies to be able to move the way you would have us to do, Father, that you may receive the praise and the glory and honor. Let not pride step into our lives. Yes. Let us continue doing what you have called us to do. Let this day be the day, Father, that there's things in our lives that may be changed around this day yes. that we may become closer to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Give us the opportunity, Father, which is there that we may love you, yes. praise you, glorify you yes. in everything that we have. Mm -hmm. We thank you for it, Father. And we give you the praise and glory and honor for it. In thy son's precious name. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Amen.